Hello everyone, I am Dr. Nitik Trivedi. Once again, welcome you all in my YouTube channel that is Dr. Nitik Trivedi. I am coming back with my new educational video which is based on pathophysiology subject given by the Pharmacy Council of India. Here, the chapter name is Cell Injury and Cellular Adaptation. Cell Injury and Cellular Adaptation is the larger chapter of this subject that's why I have divided this chapter into the various parts so kindly subscribe my channel to get the all parts and to get the knowledge of this chapter in the first part of this chapter I have included introduction definition homeostasis mechanism type of feedback system that is the positive feedback system and the negative feedback system here, cell injury and cellular adaptation is the chapter of the subject of the pathophysiology. So, before studying the chapter, it is essential to get the knowledge about the subject pathophysiology. Uh, that's why I have included at the starting of this chapter some introductory part and the various kinds of the definition. So, start with the introduction. Introduction Pathophysiology Pathophysiology is described as the study of the biological and physical manifestations or appearance of the diseases as they correlate with the underlying abnormalities and physiological disturbance. Pathophysiology does not deal directly with the treatment of the disease. Here the pathophysiology subjects is differ with the subject of the pharmacology because of why pharmacology deals directly with the treatment of the disease while pathophysiology does not deal directly with the treatment of the disease but it explains the processes within the body that result in sign and symptom of the disease. In short, pathophysiology means study of the nature and the causes of the disease or the result of the disease in the body. That means how the disease is arises and what are the signs and symptoms of the diseases. It can be included into the pathophysiology of the disease. Pathophysiology is the required area for nearly all healthcare professional, school and colleges of the India and other countries. That's why pathophysiology is the core subject of the medical science like as the MBBS, Physiotherapy, BDS, Pharmacy. That's why to study the pathophysiology subject is essential nowadays. In short, pathophysiology is an advanced field of study beyond the anatomy and physiology and it's concerned with the study of disease, infection, illness and dysfunction in the human body. That's why pathophysiology includes the study of the diseases, infection, illness and the dysfunction in the human body. Now, we'll go for the definition. Here, first it is essential to know the definition of the disease. The term disease broadly refer to any condition that impaired the normal function. In short, Functional abnormality is known as the disease. It may be caused or it may be arised by the external factor such as infectious disease or it may be caused by the internal dysfunction like autoimmune disease. To get better idea of the definition of the disease, I have divided the disease into the four categories. First one is the pathophysiology. Genic disease. In the pathogenic disease, example is the inflammatory bowel disease. Why I have taken this example? Because in the inflammatory bowel disease, one bacteria which is also known as the Helicobacter pylori enter into the ileum and it disturbs the pathological change, it produces pathological changes into your GID tract. That's why bowel movement getting disturbed as well as it also produces the ulcer. That's why it is known as the pathogenic disease because it's arise by the pathogen. 
Next is the deficiency disease. Deficiency disease. There are many examples of the deficiency disease. The most familiar example is the anemia. You can also take the example of the, of the kosher cause, marasmus, etc. Uh, or the vitamin deficiency disease which can be included into the deficiency diseases. Next is the hereditary diseases. What do you mean by the hereditary diseases? Hereditary diseases are the diseases which comes from mother or father to their child. That means it is the genetically inherited diseases. Example is the diabetes. Next is the physiological disease. Physiological disease. What do we mean by the physiological disease? Physiological disease means what? The most suitable example is the fever. If what will happen into the fever? Increase body temperature in the fever is the functional abnormalities. There are several examples uh, like as a typhoid, malaria, joint disease, etc. are the under the categories of the disease. Now go for the next definition which is known as the disorder. So what will happen into the disorder? Disorder. Disorder is the anatomical abnormality or disturbance known as the disorder. So remember, disease is functional abnormality while disorder is anatomical abnormalities. The example of the disorder are fracture, Alzheimer, etc. I have also divided the disorder into the uh, several categories. First category is mental disorder. What will happen into the me mental disorder? Uh, in the mental disorder, personality disorder, schizophrenia is included. Uh, next is the physical disorder. Physical disorder examples are fracture, multiple sclerosis, etc. Genetical disorder examples are Parkinson's and the other diseases and the uh, disorder story it is not not to be confused with the disease and disorder disease means physical or functional abnormality functional abnormality known as the disease while disorder disorder means anatomical abnormalities here the emotional and behavior uh, disorder emotional and behavior disorder example are mania anxiety depression and Next is the functional disorder, which is known as the Alzheimer. Uh, we will take the uh, example of this disease. Uh, to better understand, I have given the two picture I just uh, In which first picture, the old and old gentleman uh, thinking, uh, uh, what I have to do in the chase? They are not getting the idea. That means uh, uh, sometimes uh, at the older age, people getting losing their uh, memory. People. Are losing their memory. So what will happen? They are not uh, uh, take their uh, quick response. They are not taking the quick response. They, uh, that's, that means what? Uh, it is the one kind of the memory loss. Alzheimer is the one kind of the memory loss disease. What actually arises in the Alzheimer? In the Alzheimer, uh, see the picture. In the Alzheimer, the brain gray matter and white matter produce changes. That's uh, uh, then into the normal brain. That's why uh, it produces the anatomical abnormalities and it, that's why it is known as the disorder, not the disease. Uh, next is inflammation. Inflammation is the ch uh, full chapter which is included in your syllabus. That's why I am giving you the brief introduction about the inflammation. Inflammation is the protecting, protective mechanism of the body. To remove the injurious stimuli, or it is complex biological response of vascular tissue against the harmful stimuli like pathogen, damaged cell, or irritants. That means what? In short, when the pathogen or damaged cell or any irritants uh, produce any harmful injury, that time inflammation is arise. To repair or to heal that injury. Inflammation is not the synonym of the infection, but sometimes inflammation is caused by the infection. The most suitable example for the inflammation or inflammatory disease is arthritis.
Now the infection. Infection means the growth of a parasite organism. Now, what do you mean by the parasite? Parasite means which are not the part of our body, which is the outside of the our body, the outside part of the our body. That means infection means the growth of a parasite organism within the body, except the normal growth of the usual bacterial flora in the intestinal tract. There are several beneficiary uh, bacteria present into the our gastrointestinal tract. We cannot say it is the infectious or parasite organism. But uh, when any infectious or uh, uh, parasites come from the outside to, to inside the body is known as the uh, infection when it can grow. The example of the infection is malaria. It is a well uh, known uh, disease, malaria. So, what will happen into the malaria when the mosquito, mosquito means which mosquito? Female Anaphylaceae mosquito bite to the infected people, then it carry the plasmodium vivax, plasmodium oval kinds of the bacteria and it transmit this bacteria towards the healthy people when it can bind. That's why it spread the infection and this organism grow into the healthy people and it infect the people. That's why infection means the growth of a parasite organism within the body except the normal growth of the usual bacterial flora in the intestinal tract. Uh, next is the immunity. Immunity means defense mechanism of our body. What it do? It avoid the info infection, diseases or other unwanted biological invasion. It is known as the immunity. There are many two types of the immunity. Active immunity and the passive immunity. Active immunity means what? It already uh, activate our antibody. That means no, uh, that means it is inside our body. Uh, it uh, directly activates the antibody of our body. There is no need to take the antibody from the outside and it fight against the pathogen like the bacteria and the virus. The first example is the, uh, it is also divided, active immunity is also divided into the natural and artificial. So, in the natural, uh, there are the many kinds of the diseases which can be uh, arise into the specific or particular species like as there are some diseases are arising into the human and some diseases are arising into the animals, some diseases are arising into the plant or uh, trees. Uh, uh, like as have you ever heard that uh, new tree has the fewer? No, because it have the natural immunity and uh, to fight against the pathogen. Next is the Artificial. Artificial immunity means what? Your mother and father has uh, given you the uh, some vaccination uh, during the child days. Like as uh, we are taking the one example of the uh, uh, polio vaccine. You do not have the polio but uh, doctor uh, has given you the polio vaccine. Because of why? Because prevention is better than cure. When polio vaccine you have taken that time it resists or it inhibits to arise the polio inside you. So, it fight against the polio virus. That is why you have taken the vaccination. It is the artificial method. That is why it is not, but it under the comes into the active immunity. So, active immunity have the two types, natural and artificial. Next is the passive immunity. Passive immunity is also have the two types. First one is the natural and second is the Artificial. Natural means what? Natural means you are getting the antibodies from your mother's side to uh, your side. That means when the uh, mother lactating to their child, that's why child receive antibody from mother to their body. It is the natural process. That's why it is the natural passive immunity. It means what? Uh, child do not generate antibody by their own self. It take from the mother's side. That's why it is the passive immunity. Next is the artificial. If my body do not have the uh, antibody uh, uh, in the proper amount, so I need to take the antibody from the outside by the blood transfusion or by carrying the uh, 
uh, some antibody directly like as the monoclonal antibodies so it is the artificial and it is comes under the passive immunity uh, sometimes people divide the immunity into the cell mediated immunity as well as the human immunity so what do you mean by cell mediated immunity cell mediated immunity when the t cell involved fight against the pathogen then it is known as the cell mediated immunity there are the four kinds of the t cell like as the uh, cytotoxic t cell uh, killer uh, which is also known as the killer t cell uh, memory t cell suppressor t cell and the uh, and the uh, cytotoxic t cell suppressor t cell killer t cell and the um, memory t cell these are the four kinds of the uh, t cell and uh, helper t cell sorry cytokine t cell and killer t cell is both are the synonyms of the each other so first one is the cytokine or the killer uh, cytotoxic t cell or the killer t cell second is the uh, suppressor t cell third is the helper t cell and fourth is the memory t cell when these are involved into the uh, fighting against the pathogen then it is known as the cell mediated immunity and the humoral immunity when uh, antigen antibody reaction are take place that time several proteins like the igg that means immunoglobulin g immunoglobulin e immunoglobulin m when comes into the contact with the pathogen that time antigen antibody reaction are carried out this immunity is known as the uh, humoral immunity so immunity is also the separate chapter given in your syllabus that's why i will not uh, take your more time uh, next is the homeostasis uh, homeostasis homeostasis is the very much important part of this chapter and uh, so what is the homeost homeostasis homeostasis means ability to maintain relatively stable internal condition despite a change to the external environment that means dynamic state of equilibrium or balance that means if the outside temperature is uh, 10 degree celsius so your body, body temperature getting the 10 degree celsius no it maintains the 37 plus or minus 0.5 degree celsius so it is known as the homeostasis how it can maintain the internal organ coordinate with each other and maintain the body temperature uh, like the blood pressure glucose level and acid ph etc maintain into the balance condition that means body in balance condition body in balance condition is known as the homeostasis the body is said to be homeostasis when its cellular needs are adequate met and functional activity are occur smoothly virtually every organ system play and play a role in maintaining the internal environment how it maintain the uh, balance condition by the using of the three parts first part is receptor receptor name indicate its function to receive something to gain something to accept something receptor receive the message from the stimuli that means it responds to a stimulus it monitor change in control condition and send the input information to the control center or you can say integrated center via the sensory receptor that means the receptor receive the message from the stimulus and send it to the integrated center now what is integrated center integrated center is nothing but the brain and spinal cord so what will uh, the function of the integrated center integrated center analyze the incoming message what kind of the message come from the receptor via the sensory neurons into the integrated center and after the analyzing it reply the uh, it send the reply via the motor receptors so it that reply go towards the effector effect now what is effector effector are the cell or organ that responds according to the output command of the control center via the motor receptors these three parts mainly use following pathway to transmit 
signal towards the respective part. Sensory neurons receive the information from the receptor and send message towards the input center or the integrated center which is known as the brain and spinal cord. Motor receptor or endocrine system. Huh. Output message is transmitted by the two systems either by the motor receptor or either by the endocrine system. Motor receptor transmit the fast response and endocrine system transmit the slow and steady response. It sends the reply coming from integrated center to the effector. To gain the more knowledge or accurate knowledge about this homeostasis mechanism, uh, there is the one video uh, which can give you the uh, good idea. So here, homeostasis. What is homeostasis? Maintain a stable internal environment is known as the homeostasis. Which environment? The condition getting changed during the hot temperature, cold temperature, acidic, alkaline, uh, changing into the uh, glucose level changing into the water balance etc but it is essential to maintain the body into the normal level regulate around the right levels don't keep everything exact constant as i said body normal body temperature is 37 plus or minus 0.5 degree celsius that means do fluctuate within small uh, uh, small boundaries that means is the regulation of condition inside the body to maintain a stable internal uh, environment in response to the both internal and external condition. So, here it is essential to maintain the internal condition with respect to the external condition. Maintain internal environment change outside the ourself. Like as if too cold and too hot environment but the body temperature is 37 plus or minus 0.5 degree celsius it not getting down or not not getting up uh, who can control automatic control change from optimal condition it sends signal to the reverse the change so what will happen again body comes into the normal state uh, systems which systems maintain this uh, balance First is the receptor. What receptor do? Detect a change. Then it sends message to the integrated center that is the brain and spinal cord via the sensory neurons. So it analyzes the changes. Integrated system analyze and it sends the message toward the effector via the motor neurons. So effector gives the effect and uh, sometimes it effect by the motor neurons or sometimes by the uh, endocrine or secreting by the hormone. Uh, next, uh, there are the uh, receptor integrated system located at the different different levels. So, how it will maintain the balance? So, receptor, uh, when the nervous system involved into the homeostasis mechanism, it sends the reflex very fast, uh, like as quick response. To understand this, I will show you the one more video. Uh, this video is for the uh, nervous system response. Uh, here, there is the my uh, the one uh, hand touch when it touch with the fire. When your hand touch to the fire, then what will happen? Your receptor getting uh, sensitized and receive the hot uh, message. Uh, and it sends via the sensory neurons toward the spinal cord, toward the spinal cord because spinal cord is the parts of the integrated system. Here, spinal cord have the uh, input and the output uh, nerves. Uh, here, this one is the sensory uh, neurons which analyze, which analyze the hot environment or hot uh, uh, condition. Uh, during the time of the burning, it sent towards the uh, integrated uh, center. So, what will happen? Integrated center receive message by the sensory nerves that your hand is uh, near or touched to the uh, fire. So, you feel the burning sensation. Then, what will happen? This message 
transmit towards the brain. This message transmit towards the brain. So, uh, so brain can analyze. Sometimes brain can analyze, but not always brain is involved to transmit the message because uh, in this condition we need the quick response. That's why here the green color uh, neurons, which is which is known as the relay neuron. And relay neuron, what is the function of this relay neuron? When burning sensation feel by the receptor, it send uh, the it receive the message and transmit the message via the uh, sensory neurons uh, to the integrated center. Integrated center uh, transmit message via the relay neurons and relay neuron uh, reply via the motor neurons towards the uh, effectors. That means the muscles and you can pull out your hand. Uh, the, it is the quick response but when you need the slow response, when you need the slow response, that time brain uh, is involved or when you uh, need the steady response like as the temperature maintenance, blood pressure maintenance, uh, water level maintenance, that time brain comes into the uh, uh, activation. But here you can see it. you uh, pull out your hand from the fire. You need the quick response. That's why this response is directly uh, 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 supplied by the relay neurons to the motor neurons. So exactly what is the pathway? When you feel the burning sensation, receptor get activated, receptor uh, activation message goes by the uh, sensory neurons toward the, uh, towards the integrated center, integrated center activate the relay neuron and relay neuron directly send the uh, reply via the motor neurons uh, towards the effector and effector get activated and you pull out your hand. This pathway is known as the reflex arc mechanism because here the brain is not involved that's why it is known as the reflex arc mechanism. Uh, but when you need to maintain the blood pressure and uh, all the things that time uh, it is essential to uh, uh, take the uh, reply from the brain. Here, here I will uh, give the name of this all the pathway uh, which are involved in this uh, mechanism. Here, the uh, red, red mark is known as the sensory neurons here the cursor is uh, somewhat disturbing so I am taking the cursor here here this one is the sensory neurons which taking the message from the receptor and it transmit message towards the integrated system integrated system give the reply by the motor neurons here the blue line indicate the motor neurons here it activate the muscles uh, that means it is known as the effector uh, in between the sensory and motor neurons there is the one more neurons is the uh, relay neurons which is known as the relay neurons uh, but always relay neurons is uh, coming the uh, pathway is not essential. Sometimes uh, sensory neurons, integrated neurons and directly message travel by the motor neurons. Uh, that's why uh, it is not essential that always the relay neurons comes in, the, in this pathway uh, here. So you can get the idea. So this one is the uh, homeostasis mechanism. I have given you the idea. Uh, homeostasis mechanism is maintained by the two mechanisms. First one is the negative uh, pathway or negative feedback mechanism or second is the positive feedback mechanism. Here, the receptor, sensory neurons, integrated system, motor receptor and effector form or produce mainly two kinds of the feedback mechanism. That means types of the feedback, me uh, uh, feedback system is negative feedback and the positive feedback. We will see one by one. Here first one is the negative feedback. What will happen into the negative feedback? Negative feedback means response of effectors oppose the original stimulus. 
it is called negative feedback because of why it neglect the stimulus that means it oppose the original stimulus an example of negative feedback system is the temperature thermostat in your home uh, uh, like as an example when you give the command to your ac to 24 uh, degree celsius that means it maintain the 24 degree celsius and it, it automatically off and the temperature sensor turn the air condition off and on to maintain air temperature with a specific limit range in the same way the brain control the normal body temperature homeostasis by the negative feedback mechanism some some stimuli disturb the homeostasis by an increasing in body temperature due to this condition thermoreceptor uh, which is also known as the temperature sensitive receptor in the skin getting activated and it send message towards the brain and what will happen uh, the brain getting activated and by the uh, sensory neurons it receive the message by the temperature sensitive receptor via the nerve impulse and getting activated so now the integrated system analyze what kinds of the message is coming so integrated system analyze the message and send output message to the effector towards the effector that is the skin now what will happen to regulate the temperature your temperature getting uh, increased uh, now you need to temperature uh, getting down to maintain the normal body temperature so effectors according to the output message of the control center increase sweating from sweat glands cause increased heat loss by the ego presence so more sweating can um, arise that's why temperature getting down and it regulates the normal body temperature finally decrease the temperature in the form of response and normalize the body temperature or condition uh, if you know more about the negative feedback system then i will uh, take you uh, towards the another uh, video here Here. negative feedback system in the negative feedback system if your sugar level is high then what will happen it activate and decrease the sugar level but when it getting too low then again it increase the sugar level so negative feedback system maintaining your sugar level uh, one more example of uh, the neg uh, negative feedback system is if you go into the cold environment then your body receptor getting activated and it sends the uh, cold environment so it sends the message towards the integrated center via the sensory neurons so integrated center send the message towards the effector so effector what will do effector produce the severing and severing increase your body temperature and it get normal so another example when you go into the too hot condition the another receptor getting uh, activate it send the message towards the integrated center via the sensory neurons so integrated center uh, send the message towards the effector so effector what effector do it produce the perspiration and again your body getting the normal temperature that means uh, so here one more example for the better understand here when you do the exercise that time you need the more oxygen that's why receptor sense that you your body needs the more amount of the oxygen during the exercise condition so it says send the message toward the control center that means integrated center via the sensory neurons so control center getting activated and it send the message toward the effector here effector is the lungs and the heart so lungs getting pump the more uh, fastly that's why it getting the more amount of the air that's why it, it increase the oxygen level that's why it getting the it uh, it balance the oxygen level during the time of the 
exercise so this these two videos for the negative feedback system now we'll move towards the positive feedback system so what will happen towards the positive feedback system the effector adds to the initial stimulus instead of the neg negating that means it speed up the process it not oppose but it stimuli or it uh, add something that's why uh, it is known as the positive feedback mechanism the best suitable example for the positive feedback system is labor contraction in the labor contraction force during the time of the labor contraction force baby's head or body into the birth canal it produce effect on control condition and increase the distension of cervix of uterus it activates the stretch receptor of the cervix and send input messages to control center via the sensory impulse so what will happen control center activate the hypothalamus and pituitary gland and send the output message to increase the oxytocin secretion in the blood so what will happen oxytocin produce that effect on the on onto the effector which is the cervix of uterus and cause distension of cervix of uterus than the normal value to push the baby further into the birth canal so what will happen birth of baby decrease distension of cervix of uterus and interrupts positive feedback cycle uh, if you get the more easy idea about the positive feedback system so uh, see my video here positive feedback system here what will happen first it is essential to know the anatomy of the female reproductive system so here uh, look at the uh, red arrow here this one is the cervix Uh, and uh, this one is the amniotic fluid out of the amniotic fluid there is the amniotic sac uh, the red color marking indicate the uterus then there is the umbilical cord which joined with the fetus then uh, then the placenta uh, membrane here so what will happen during the uh, positive feedback system when baby head when baby head drops in cervix when baby head drops in cervix so it produces the contraction when baby head here look at the uh, arrow red arrow here here baby head drops into the cervix so what will happen when baby head drops into the cervix it send message towards the integrated center it messages towards the integrated center that means brain and the anterior pituitary gland activate so what will happen it secrete oxytocin into the blood what is the function of the oxytocin oxytocin produces contraction into the uterus oxytocin produces contraction into the uterus so how it produces the contraction into the uterus it produces the contraction in this manner that uterus contraction at the upper side so uterus contracts on the upper side see the arrow here green arrow see the green arrow here uterus contraction due to the effect of the oxytocin contract towards the upper side so it open the cervix but uh, when the secretion of the oxytocin arise it contracts the uterus these effect secrete the another neurotransmitter at the wall of the uterus which is known as prostaglandin which is known as prostaglandin so what are the role of the prostaglandin prostaglandin further increase the contraction of the uterus wall 
here uh, I, I have shown it by the blue arrow so what will happen in this process baby head drops into the cervix then cervix may uh, send the message towards the pituitary gland pituitary gland secrete the oxytocin oxytocin produces the uterine contraction uterine contraction uh, secrete the prostaglandin then, uh, again the prostaglandin produces the contraction so here the blue arrow i have given the blue, uh, prostaglandin by the blue arrow here that one look in, look into the uh, figure so why it is called the positive feedback system because oxytocin produces the contraction and more contraction secrete the more prostaglandin and prostaglandin again produces the contraction so what will finally happen cervix mouth getting open at the near about the 10 cm of the diameter so baby come from inside uterus to the outside the body so it is the positive feedback system because here one system add and support the other system it not inhibit the uh, activation of the another system so the positive feedback mechanism indicate more oxytocin release more prostaglandin and it produce more contraction due to this net effect baby come from uterus to outside the body because of the opening of the cervix mouth <coughs> so here in this video i have given idea about the uh, first the introduction of the pathophysiology then i have taken the various definitions like as the disease disorder in infection immunity etc as well as i have given you the brief idea about the homeostasis mechanism i have shown you the one video as well as uh, according to the homeostasis there are the two kinds of the uh, feedback mechanism first one is the negative mechanism i have given you the idea about the negative feedback mechanism as well as the second mechanism is the positive feedback mechanism uh, i have given you the idea about the positive feedback mechanism and i have shown you the one video about the positive feedback mechanism hope you understand uh, understand and uh, if you like this uh, video then kindly uh, subscribe my channel and uh, click on to the like button i will add the second part of uh, this chapter uh, cell injury and cellular adaptation soon so Uh, keep update with this channel and i will inform you soon thank you thank you very much have a good day